once again in the hospital with a, a white count of 50,000 and diarrhea and really quite ill, probably it's going to occur to you. But coming in de novo to the, the, the clinician's office who's out there in the community, how do you suspect C. diff? Who needs to be tested? How do you make this diagnosis? Who wants to start with this? Yeah, well, I'll start. I, I want to make an, an, an important point, which is when you have a pay, the most common symptom of C. diff is diarrhea and uh, non-bloody diarrhea. Blood is only seen in maybe uh, five to eight percent of cases, something in that range. So when you have a patient with diarrhea, it's important to ask certain questions. And the, those questions are things that we were taught in medical school to help us differentiate whether it's a small bowel or the large bowel that's the source of that diarrhea. So small bowel diarrhea usually has generalized abdominal cramps and large volume diarrhea. Colonic diarrhea tends to have lower abdominal pain and uh, it has a small volume diarrhea that may contain blood and mucus. And it has some rectal symptoms, such as urgency and tenesmus. Having said that, the diarrhea of the sick people with uh, C. diff tends to be very large volume. And it, it doesn't have blood, and it almost looks like small bowel diarrhea. Now, you can get C. difficile in a small bowel, but primarily it's a colonic infection. So that's a very important thing. What questions do you ask a patient about their diarrhea? You ask, a, or what questions should you ask the patient? You should ask them about their diarrhea, what the volume is, where their pain is, does it have blood in it? And almost every patient will tell you that it has a particular smell. Now, I will tell you that I think many patients uh, do uh, uh, are, are um, valid observers, and their diarrhea does smell differently. And uh, we all know that there are dogs who can actually go through a hospital and sit at the bedside, identify someone who has diarrhea from C. diff, because they can smell these volatile aromatic acids in the diarrhea. I will also tell you that I don't believe that this is a, a, a valid point, because maybe 20 to 30 percent of my patients say, my C. diff is back, it's the same smell it always was, and when you test them, that's not the case. So how do you make the diagnosis? What is the sine qua non? What tests do you do? Well, that depends on what hospital you're in. Uh, there are basically just two tests. One is the GDH, glutamate dehydrogenase, which tests for the presence of the organism, C. diff. It doesn't tell you whether it's toxin producing or not. So then you need to do a toxin test. And you can either do that by ELISA or by PCR. And some hospitals, mine in particular, uh, does a GDH test. And if that's negative, they do nothing else. If that's positive, then they do an ELISA test. If that's positive, they do nothing else. And they call you C. difficile positive uh, toxin. Okay, now, if it's negative, it's the last one ahead, in the series. Go ahead. Uh, if it's negative, if the ELISA is negative and the GDH is positive, then they do a PCR test. Okay. Okay? Now, we have patients to whom we give antibiotics and within days they have diarrhea. Not all of them have C. diff. A lot of them are simply antibiotic, colonic flora, disturbed diarrhea. So that's an important differentiation for the clinician out in the community. Um, how do you differentiate that without necessarily going ahead and testing everybody for C. diff? What do you do? Well, first of all, I think you should test everybody for C. diff. Fair enough. We're okay. done. <laughs> well, but you, you could stop the antibiotic first. That, that, that might would. solve if, the problem if you, right away. If you can, if you stop, can. The if you can stop the antibiotic first, it, right. okay? Uh, but uh, I think part of it is, does the patient have fever? Does the patient have an elevated white count? If the answer to those, that, those questions is yes, that patient does not have antibiotic-associated diarrhea, which is just a change in the intestinal bacteria and a change in the way they ferment uh, carbohydrates and change the digestive process. And when you stop the antibiotic, that resolves relatively quickly. Okay. It's not really a sickness. It's just a condition. Let's use those artificial things, but everybody sort of has a feeling tone for what I mean. All right. A different approach, I must say, 
uh, as you know, there are some antibiotics that are usually associated with gastrointestinal symptoms. Take erythromycin, for example, azithromycin. Some of those are among the most commonly used antibiotics, and you kind of expect your patient to develop gastrointestinal symptoms. And when they do, you shouldn't uh, test them because one of the most important principles in testing 2 CD diff is that the diarrhea should be unexplained. If you have a good explanation for the diarrhea, perhaps you can wait, particularly if the patient is doing fine, doesn't have any other symptoms or signs suggestive of diarrhea. And in fact, we will get to diagnosis perhaps a bit later, but I want to say that one of the issues that we've been facing every day, both in the community as well as in the hospital, is overtesting for Clostridium difficile. Now using very sensitive tests, we may be causing an additional issue. Everyone's been listening to you. Everyone's testing everybody, and you say don't necessarily do yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Av. I mean, you should only be testing those people that at least have clinically significant diarrhea. Okay. So one or two loose bowel movements, you don't need to test them. And that brings up the definition that we all use, perhaps with some artifice. How do you define mild versus moderate versus severe disease? Are there, are there markers? Are there clear-cut guidelines for those terms? Well, there is certainly for the severe. Uh, patients that have a white count of 15,000, patients that have an albumin of less than three, and patients with abdominal tenderness. I mean, those are patients with severe disease. If you talk about complicated disease, then they have the systemic manifestations of disease. Uh, they may have a high lactate level. They may have uh, multiple organ failure. They have consequences of the infection that make it complicated.